pressure bust pipes what's going on what up what's up what's good what's going on how y'all doing man um so today I decided to do something a little different. You know what I'm saying I feel like I'd have made enough highlight reels and enough what you call it. I didn't had enough winning runs and, and gameplay for highlights and stuff like that. So today we doing some informational stuff for you on YouTube. So I am Mega Mecca. How you doing today? Um, I've been grinding out on Hunter's Arena. I've actually made it to top 50 on the leaderboards. Um, and it's crossplay too, so just top 50 in general. So yeah, um, what I am going to be showing you today is pretty much how to pick, find a character and get good with them. How to, and this is in solos, how to drop in an area and get used to an area and learn an area how to loot fast and be level 10 plus by the time the first world boss spawns how to get early kills how oh yeah my secret on leveling so this is gonna be a crazy xp leveling technique that i use to get level 10 plus before world boss spawns also how to get rid of the weapon merchant and only deal with the and only deal with the blacksmith this is very important as far as speed and power leveling as fast as possible as far as your level xp and as far as legendary in your gear and using the blacksmith to you know exceed the regular gear level because initially when i first started playing probably like a lot of you i thought that once you get all legendary you're you're good you're set not even close. And I'm going to tell you why it's better to only deal with the blacksmith and to never get your legendaries from the merchant unless the situation absolutely positively calls for it. I'm going to break that down for you. I'm going to break down early game strategy to mid game strategy to late game strategy. And, it, you know, these matches are at a very fast pace. So you got to kind of be on the ball. Um... I'm going to tell you why, when it's good to fight early, when it's bad to fight early, when it's good to intervene in fights to pick up some quick loot, when it's bad to get in fights, when to chase, when not to chase. All these things matter in your success rate in the match. So, if you are tired of dropping and dying and getting bot five repeatedly, if you are tired of fighting in these long drawn out fights and getting third party if you are tired of not being able to level as fast as others or not being able to find good loot consistently i'm your man this you have come to the right place i am going to show you how to do all of that today in other words i'm going to show you how to assert dominance in hunter's arena but yeah that's ultimately what you want to do is assert dominance on a constant level you definitely do not want to be inconsistent because you will never climb that way. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so, Road to Dominance is what the video was going to be titled. So, on this Road to Dominance, you want to be that dominant player in Hunter's Arena. What you want to do is... You're going to want to, first things first is, Time to figure out who you are going to use. Man. Figure out who is the character for you. Time to hunt. My recommendation is to have at least two characters mastered. But you got to find who works for you. What character makes the most sense to you. And you got to go into the training room. So that's what I'm going to do real quick. You come into the training room. And you pick the character. I'm talking about... You don't just go to the training room and pick the character that looks the coolest and then force yourself to use them. That's not what I'm talking about. You go into the training room and you learn how you want to play your character. You 
then you want to learn your strings. One, two, three, four, five. So everybody should have a stream similar to that. And you need to learn the combos, how to break people down. And this right here isn't fast. It only comes with experience. So don't just think you're going to come in here, learn a, a kill combo, and execute it every time. That's not how it works at all. Launchers. Every character has a launcher. Now for this character, the launcher is L1 square, or if you hit the martial arts button twice. That's pretty much the combo. So, I mean the launcher. So if, say I was to do a combo, right? Your best bet is to find the best place to put a, a launcher in once you know you've got your opponent dead to rights. Try not to do launchers early in combos unless you get the drop on somebody. So if you come up behind somebody, they don't see you, you can hit them with one auto and then hit a launcher immediately, right? The reason why I recommend that is because you're going to get their breaker right there. You know that move when they knock you back? They get that once every 100 seconds. They should just make it an even two minutes. But yeah, you get that once every 100 seconds. So that's roughly about what? Just almost two minutes it's like 20 seconds away for two minutes but yes yeah, so you want to bait that out as fast as possible so getting the drop on people and hitting them with the little quick launcher is the way to do that now you don't want to just come up and do straight launcher because this is a 3d game you can turn the camera so if they might see you they might know that you're going to come up and try to just go launcher and they'll dodge the last second and you've already started the fight and you've wasted your launcher. You don't want to do that. <clears throat> you also don't want to try to do the martial arts launch. If your character has one, I'm not too familiar with all of the characters, but the characters I know how to use, you don't want to use the martial arts launch because you can be parried. So, you want to find out where, where it's best in your stream to use the launcher. Now, I can't use the launcher after I do the last hit because it knocks him back, right? So you want to get as many hits as possible. One, two, three, four, launcher. Then I can do another one, two, three, four. Now that's just typical. So for me, an optimal combo would be to get the four hits, launcher. So that would be an opti optimal combo for me. All right, so when you're in here, you learn exactly what your moves do. So my moves are called Talon Slash, which is pretty much my launcher. Bloodstorm, which is the move I finished that combo with. The, you know, the three hits. Death's Embrace, it's, that's pretty much like a close the gap move, if you will. Chainfall is the move you unlock once you become level 10, along with my Chain Dance, the move that, you know, is pretty much your ultimate attack. And that's, everyone is like that. Everyone starts off with their first three. And then once you hit level 10, which is why it's so important to hit level 10 as fast as possible. And I'm going to show you how to do that pretty soon here now. You unlock your fourth ability and your ultimate at level 10. So, Talent Slash, what does it do? What does it do? First thing, most important thing, and this is the reason why they do it this way, is that you need to know the cooldowns of your moves. You definitely want to know the cooldowns of your moves. It is very important. So, for two of the moves I'm going to be using the most, it's 15 seconds. Now, 15 seconds is a long time in a fight. You can drag it out if that's your battle style, and I'll show you battle styles in a minute when I show my gameplay. That works for me. But, if your battle style is the slow play, then you might get all of these abilities twice in the single, well, the first three, because... Typically, your fourth ability is your hardest hitting ability, your best ability, and then your ultimate. I mean, well, that's your ultimate. That's your special, man. You, that's your hardest hitting. That's the move that's gonna lock you and the player you hit into an animation, and until you the damage is done. So, talent slash 15 second cooldown. Swing the chains. Swing the, swing the chainsaw forward, and launches the enemy airborne. So that's my launcher. You, every character's launcher is different, so you have to find what your character's launcher is, and you have to use it the most effective way possible. So you got to figure that out in the training room, and then ultimately 
learn the best way to implement it in a real match when you're dropping in solos. Bloodstorm, also a 15 second cooldown. Slashes the enemy three consecutive times. The final strike does a knock, knock, knock down, knocks down the enemy. It's like a little typo there. They didn't space out. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, small, small fixes, whatever. So that's why I like ending my combos with Bloodstorm because it causes a hard knockdown and allows me to approach the enemy. Now there's Death's Embrace. This is my third ability. 17 seconds cooldown. It has a little bit longer cooldown than the first two because it's a utility move and it's very good for this character. Single press extends the chainsaw to pull them in. Additional press. June launches himself to the enemy and performs a powerful strike that knocks the enemies down. So this is why this is my favorite ability for June because he's a melee character. So long range characters cause me a lot of problems. So with this move, that's the single press, which brings them to you. It's a gap closer, it, you know, so for those range characters, hashtag M Momo, I can't stand Momo. I, I, every time I see that character, I just want her gone. This is my Momo, this is my Momo killer. And double press. You see that right there? That's a get in move. So that's pretty much what I want to do to Momos. See, I'm in now. Now, for the fourth move and the ultimate, the two moves you unlock when you're level 10. Chainfall, cooldown is 60 seconds. So you know this move has to be pretty good if the cooldown is that long. Slams the ground with a chain sword and knocks the enemy, knocks down the enemy. Now I know that sounds basic and I was like, wow, what's so good about unlocking this move and why does this move have such a big cooldown when it, I got two other moves that does that, that does that. You know what I mean? Like what's so good about it? When I tell you this move does damage, it does damage and it can't be interrupted. So once you start the move, it's coming out. So the move has armor on it. So the typing here is just kind of lackluster. They didn't really type it out well. It should definitely include that it's armored and definitely include that it does massive damage. So it makes sense. the reading will actually make sense, but it just doesn't make sense here. I'm pretty sure it's probably like that for some other characters too. The devs got to get in there and polish this up a little bit. But I know what it does because I've been using the character, grinding all the way out to top 50 on the servers. And this is his, by far his best move. That's why it has such a large cooldown. And last but not least, the ultimate attack. Every character's best move. Unleashes a dead, oh, chain dance. Unleashes a deadly strike and knocks down the enemy. <laughs> Again, the typing is bad. So, with chain dance, and it's different for each character. Chain dance isn't the ultimate attack that you just want to throw out like this. All now you see that didn't really do much damage, right? So 262 damage, right? That's what Chain Dash does when you throw it out normally. Okay, but what I've noticed about Chain Dance, and this could be true for a lot of characters is, you can't just throw out the ultimate because people can either block it, they can dodge it, or you might think they're about to attack you and you want to whiff punish with it and it just doesn't whiff punish, it misses. So, it's all, so you always want to combo the move in like so. Launcher, one, two, three, four, boom. Man. Okay. So, even though the counter started over for some reason, I guess it took Chain Dance too long to end. That is a 1,000 damage combo. 1,000 plus damage combo. As you can see, he has uh, 2,400. So, if you can get that off in a fight, you're going to be at a huge advantage. Depending on what your armor, how much damage you can take, how much health you have, and how much damage you do with your weapon. That all varies in matches, of course, at different times. All right, and then every character has a passive. So, the true way to master your character is to learn how to best use all five of these abilities, or all four of these abilities and your ultimate attack, and how to best utilize your passive. So, my passive with June is 
bloody revenge. June can quick step twice in a row. If June evades a projectile with quick step, he can quickly dash to his target performing a basic attack. So you, you've left training. You figured out a couple of combo streams. You've seen what their moves do and you're like, this is the character. I'm going in on this character. This is my guy or girl. You go to collections. To my character is June. You go to, you go to, okay. So you go past the cosmetic stuff and then you go to skill guide. You click the skill so they can give you a exact rundown on how the skill is to be used and what it does. If you don't already know. So I didn't even know that right there. What we just watched. I seen my, I've seen June do that. I thought that Momo did that when she hits you and locked you in place. But apparently it's a sidestep deal. And if I hit attack, he attacks there. So I'm glad I saw that. Attacks martial arts. So that's my, you know, that's your pretty much auto combo. That's martial arts, the launcher. Skill, that's the launcher. Second skill, Bloodstorm, Talent Slash, Death's Embrace. So this is, this just got, this move just got buffed too. There's armor on Death's Embrace second click. So I guess that's what the red flash is. You see how he pulls her in? There's no armor on that. But when he pulls himself to her, that red is armor. And then, there's the ultimate, oh no, no, that's the um, chain fall, yeah, it does a hard knockdown and does a lot of damage and it's armored, I believe, right? Yeah, see, you see how it starts off with red and it gets into the air, that's armored. And then overall, the super skill. Everybody has this. I felt like Joan's super skill needs to be increased in damage because it doesn't really do anything, like it doesn't do a lot. But I mean, that could be every character though, who knows? So you definitely want to go there and make sure that you see how all your moves are supposed to be used, especially your passives. Because sometimes, right now with the devs, a lot of the writing on the moves and passives are kind of like lackluster and under. Yeah. So, now we're going to go into a live game. And I'm going to show you the area I like to drop in, my loot train to get to 10 as fast as possible, when to fight, when to not fight, how I do things, yeah, right? Yeah, and I Plunder do. Legacy is kind of like the tilted towers of Hunter's Arena, if you will. I mean, Fanatic Ruins is pretty, I mean, put it like this. Fanatic Ruins of Plunder Legacy is like the tilted towers. They're big, they're massive, they have multiple levels, they have so much loot. So a lot of people land in those two places. Seal Fortress and Ancient Altars, they're, they're good, but the loot train takes a little bit longer because they're spread out. The, the loot spread out around those places. You see, they don't have one big structure. So it's better to fall, it's better to drop at one of these I'm places, on Fanatic Ruins or Plunder Legacy, because the it's one big open. structure, and those structures have a lot of loot. So we're gonna go back to Plunder Legacy. And in the way to where, okay, well, that land was a little botched. Typically land better than that. But the key to looting fast is you pretty much, you're pretty much just treasure hunting. So you only want to fight enemies that are next to So if somebody makes the mistake of being right on top of you when you're waking up, you can just wake up with an attack. Now, typically, I wouldn't fight this guy because he's going to take a while to kill, but he does have a, um, a, a rare chest next to him. So he's worth the time because you're not only getting the XP for killing him, but you're going to get massive XP for opening that chest and some good loot, hopefully. The next safe area. 
Alright, so you see I'm already level 6. I've already killed a player. And I'm getting two chests here. Okay. So all we're doing is looking for chests. If we don't see a chest, we not we don't fight. There's no point. Okay, so we got a chest there. There's another blue chest down there. So the same loot train as before. Okay, so they're dead. He's going to shoot at me, but I'm going to open this chest and be out of there before he can hit me. Okay, so there's no point in fighting those, but you got to fight these because they're the closest ones to the chest. He should turn around because he's coming pretty far away from his zone. Okay, he does. All right, now originally I thought getting those crystals was kind of dumb, especially the health ones, but getting the those crystals are good. Every now and again they have passive effects that buff your, your overall stats permanently for the rest of the game. So that's what you want to do. Okay, okay. So we're going to fight this one because he's next to a legendary chest. Alright, see? So level 10, right? And the world boss has not spawned yet. So, the world boss is going to spawn pretty soon here. Another reason why I like to treasure hunt instead of fighting a lot of ads to level is simply because you get more gear out of them, right? And what you want to do is you want to get as much gear as possible because it's going to help you avoid going to the weapon merchant and just be able to focus on finding, um, to be able to focus on finding, um, the blacksmith. You don't want to go to the weapons merchant, and there's two reasons why. The number one reason why you don't want to go to the weapons merchant to get your legendaries is because they cost you two. They cost you two of this currency over here. I call them runes. I'm gonna find out the real name for them pretty soon here now, but it's gonna cost you two of those. When you go to the blacksmith, he only costs you one. Okay, there's a there's a boss actually here, so that's perfect. You always want to get level ten as soon as possible, and the reason. The reason why I get to keep looting even though the boss is already here is because the boss is on top of me. It's not going to take any time to go to him. I would get that. Okay, I'm going to get this when somebody killed this boss that's, that's usually right here. There's usually a level 10 monster right there, but he's not there. Good for me. So we're going to head up. All right, we're going to run past those guys. Dip into here real quick. Okay, so we can open this the chest. The barrier is shrinking. All right, so we get, we got to open that chest. We're going to run past these guys. They don't matter. Okay, so he's coming up here. So he wants the boss too. All right, we got the drop on him. Okay, he's used his breaker early in the fight. That's what we want. We're gonna stack. Ah, okay. I get iframes on wake up. He doesn't get to. Okay. The next safe area has been secured. Okay, so he wants to run. I'm not chasing him. Alright, so we got somebody who wants to interrupt. Two people that want to interrupt. He can go ahead and think he's going to get that, but he's not. Oh, so he came to steal. Okay.
The barrier is shrinking. Rising star. You don't get the steal. Legendary so, equipment acquired. I would have loved to let me break all of this down because this is why you get to avoid going to the merchant and go straight to the blacksmith right here. So I would have loved to just fight the world boss, but I don't get to do that now because, you know, as you can see, I had a lot of people ride up on me. I'm in the storm. I'm trying to get out. I'm gonna heal in here. Try to get an idea of where that guy's gonna go. He should be coming this way pretty soon. The next safe area has been secured. So kind of barrier, kind of gatekeeping right here. There he goes. him see I got a lot of people right here right but I'm not gonna fight them watch out I'm out of here what you doing I'm gone okay so as you can see I got 23 of these rooms right I'm gonna catch up and read your stuff but you know I'm in match and stuff so I got 23 of these rooms right and I got 64 or I'm gonna just call it or right so right now my top priority is finding this blacksmith I'm moving there. Because I'm going to power spike my ass off. And it's all thanks to my loot train and opportuni opportunistic fights. Things of that nature. <sighs> you always want to grab as many as the those as you can, too. Is shrinking. Oh, shit. Two people are headed to the... Okay, there we go. Okay, he doesn't really know how to fight. He's just mad. All right, so I don't get to go to, I don't get to go to him. I'm gonna launch you. What you doing? So that was a little bit of bad luck there. The reason why I did my ult in the barrier is because I knew that he was gonna die. So that was a little bit of tough luck right there. Other people showed up at it. It wasn't an opportunistic time to go. Um, now, <laughs> we got our other guy on the I'm other on side of the way. map. Nah, dog, I don't got time for you. I do not have time for you. At all. It is imperative that I get to this blacksmith. So now I'm gonna level everything to gold. And equipment collection complete. And now I get to level stuff beyond places. level, you know. So now I've enhanced my weapon to complete. It is done. It is as strong as it's gonna get. I have a scroll, so now I get to enchant my weapon. And now the I am in the end game. I'm probably the strong thank you, uh, thank you. About the fighting skills, yeah. What's up? Oh no, this isn't a real person. Leave me alone. I don't want to fight that NPC. You gotta look for the green eyed the people who look like the green eyed champions are NPCs. Okay, I don't need any of that, so I'm just gonna heal. 
there are th me and two other um, fighters left so at this point in the fight okay they're fighting good okay they're fighting good so you kind of let them hash it out okay i got him now it's me and her come here baby girl good game that's a good game and you see i was hitting like a truck right so what did we just see there what we saw was we saw me Dropping in an area I was most familiar with. Hold on real quick, this, that's kind of distracting. <laughs> I just want to check my rank really quick before I get into my point. Dang, 69, just off of going to sleep last night, I dropped out of top 50. That worry. concludes the video. I have shown you the way. I have shown you exactly what you need to be dominant. Um, pretty much, dominance consists of five things. Level 10 as fast as possible. A loot train in an area that you are most familiar with. Don't fight unless you absolutely have to. Prioritize the weapon smith over the weapon merchant. And last but not least, tear up those weapons past legendary and use enchantments if you have them. Those five things is all the five things you need to become more dominant per game. And you just got to get out there, man. Get those drops. Keep dropping in the same location until you learn it. Learn the fastest loot train there. Get to 10 as fast as possible. And when the first world boss spawns, you want to be there. You want to kill him. You want to break down all that loot. Make as much ore as possible. Get to that weaponsmith. Tear up all your weapons, man. And get that win. That's how you become more dominant in the game, man. Um, this is your boy, Maka. Coming to you with this guide. I hope it was helpful. Let me know how you feel about the guide down in the comments. And until the next video, I'll catch you guys later.